The first point I will be covering is the layout of the two apps. On the left side is Notability, and as you can tell for both apps I love dark mode. But anyway, here I am making divider and subject. I like the interface of Notability much better, as it is more visually appealing and appears more organised. I also personally find it much easier to find what I am looking for. It is much preferred for me for PDFs and documents. On the right side is GoodNotes. I do not like the folders, I honestly wish you could change the colours of them. The organisation system for me looks messy and I wish it was more strategic in order like Notability. However, GoodNotes slightly redeems itself a bit with the coloured and patterned notebook covers on the front of each notebook. And I also like how you can choose which paper you are using while you are making the notebook. Just some extra information, GoodNotes allows you to add new types of papers into your app as I like to use black paper, but Notability does not allow you to do this. Now you can see the cover and the first page. The second thing I will be talking about is pens, erasers and highlighters. For Notability, the pens are roughly the same as GoodNotes. They have the thick pen, the pen that reacts to pressure sen sensitivity, and a fine tip pen to write. However, personal preference, I do not like the way I write on Notability, so this is why I mainly use GoodNotes. Notability has cool pen features. They have dotted lines and lines have gaps in between. I don't really use these. The colours on Notability are a bit restricted. It is very hard to choose the right colour compared to GoodNotes. As you can see, this is my handwriting on Notability. It, it does not look as nice and I'm trying much harder to write neatly. This is the highlighter on Notability. The highlighter goes under the text and does not cover the black writing to make it shaded and lighter. You can do all sorts of shapes and if you want to have a straight highlight, you, you can hold down the text. You can also change the colours in the same way. The eraser rubs out in one clean stroke. And you can also rub out the first layer of highlighter and then you can rub out the text. GoodNotes has three different pens which react to pressure sensitivity. They have the fountain pen, which I personally love using as it is just the right pressure sensitivity for me. And they also have a few others. The highlighter also goes under the text and it is much easier to modify the size you want to write in and also the colour you want to use. This is why I like GoodNotes much better. If you like to make your notes more visually appealing, I recommend GoodNotes as it looks more realistic and more like paper than Notability. Both apps have the under the highlight feature, however the rubber on GoodNotes is not as smooth and rubs out in chunks instead of a smooth line, but they also have the get rid of the highlighter and then get rid of the writing. Here I will be testing all the different pens, there are three in total. I like using the second one which is the fountain pen. The third thing I will be talking about is shapes and formatting. In both apps, you can use vertical or horizontal for scrolling. I really like this new update as it gives you the freedom to use what you like instead of the restrictive nature of Notability being only vertical scrolling and GoodNotes being only horizontal scrolling. There are many different paper options in Notability and colors you can choose from. However, as I said before, you cannot import your own paper. On Notability, you can also format the size of your writing and move it around, as shown here. Ch you can also change the colour of what you have written. This is slightly different to GoodNotes as you cannot actually change the size of, of the writing, keeping the dimensions the same on GoodNotes. I also prefer drawing shapes on Notability. Notability allows you to have quick and easy shapes and with just holding down 
your pen, you are able to get any shape you like, including straight lines, arrows, circles, squares, and rectangles, etc. You can then go ahead and edit the shape, and then you can pick what filler you wanted to have and what outline. You can also change how thick the outline is. This is really good and it allows you to be very creative and it makes it very easy to colour in shapes. This is not on GoodNotes. Once again, I'll show you how GoodNotes supports vertical and horizontal scrolling. You can also change the paper in the settings. On GoodNotes, you have to change the setting to draw a shape. The shapes on GoodNotes are not conventional. This is sometimes beneficial, but honestly, sometimes it's very annoying as when I'm trying to draw a rectangle, it ends up being a strange shape with more than six sides, which is very annoying. However, this can be good for some activities, like when you want to draw an unusual shape, as notability that does not allow you to draw this. Sometimes when I'm trying to draw a box around my writing, it would end up looking like a strange shape and could be quite annoying. You can also alter the size of the shape and you can also draw shapes with the selected fill button when you in the tool section and this allows you to fill in the colour. I like using this for the headings. As I forgot to show you before, I'll just show you now. You can resize the text and you can also change the colour of highlighter and written notes. Both apps also have this random cursor which you can just show your writing. And you can also type text in both apps. The text on Notability is much easier to use. Now I'll be showing you some extra features for both apps. For Notability, you have a favourites bar where you can add your favourite pens. This is a new update. You can also add highlighters and rubbers of all different sizes. There is also a record button where you can record your teachers, etc. This is the best feature ever and I wish they added it to GoodNotes. You can also track your writing from the record feature. Notability also has a zoom feature. I like how they place the, the editing tools on the zoom feature as well. GoodNotes does not do this and you have to click from the top. The way that no the zoom feature works, I don't like it compared to GoodNotes, but some people may like it so you have to try it out yourself to understand. Notability also allows you to scan documents, add in GIFs and sticky notes onto the page. You can also take photos straight from the app and you can also add photos from your photo library. I don't really use these features much except for adding in photos and maybe scanning documents. However, scanning documents does take up a lot of storage. Here I am trying out a sticky note. I sometimes use this for homework but I hardly ever use it as I'll rather just write it down in my planner. GoodNotes does not really have any unique features compared to Notability. The only feature they have is the zoom feature and the basic adding in photos and taking photos from the app. The, zoom picture, the zoom feature for me is much preferred on GoodNotes as I like how they smoothly track your writing compared to Notability. I like how they put the photo bar at the top compared to Notability where you have to click into your actual photos. The next thing I will be talking about is exporting and side-by-side -side view. On Notability, you can export as a PDF or note or image to your camera roll or storage system. You can also rec export recordings that you may have taken. Notability does not have a converting writing feature or finding writing unless you buy it. Another feature is bookmarking pages, which is also on GoodNotes. Side-by-side -side view can be brought up from the bar on the left side and dragged in. 
However, I find this much more complicated than GoodNotes. The exportation system for GoodNotes is the same as Notability. You can export it as an image or PDF, and you can also export it to another GoodNotes app. You can also bookmark and you can make collections. This is different from Notability as you cannot make collections on Notability, which is kind of like chapters. The side-by-side -side feature on GoodNotes is much easier to implement as you just simply drag from the top and put on the other side just like that. What I use the two apps for. So for Notability, I like to annotate PDFs and practice test papers. I do not like using GoodNotes for this as it, I cannot find what I'm looking for. I then, with, from PowerPoints, I would then get photos and copy it over using the text box feature and then copy it into GoodNotes and then I would annotate it on GoodNotes or write notes around it. This is a good way to get a visual stimulus and it is much easier than getting photos from the internet or hand drawing it yourself. So just a quick summary of which one you should buy. So I will summarize my talk while you look at an image of a dog because they're cute. Personally, if I had to buy one, I would buy Notability for the record feature. The only reason I actually want good notes is for me to take notes. But I know that people like writing no notes on Notability. So if you can do your PDFs and write your notes on Notability, it is much easier to just buy one app and not have to pay for the other one. But if you do like getting creative with your notes, Notability is definitely not the one for you to write on. GoodNotes can, is much easier for me to write notes as I prefer how I write on it, but it really depends per person. And also some people like the simplicity of Notability rather than GoodNotes. GoodNotes can also do the same for you. You can also store PDFs in there. Many, I see many people doing that. However, I do not like the organization system at all, which is a personal preference, but if you actually do like the organization system of GoodNotes, you should buy that instead of Notability and you only have to buy one app. However, if you have enough money to buy both and you, and you should think that it is an investment for your study as it is only roughly $30 and compared to what you will buy for notebooks and stationery, it is definitely worth it, it, the money in the end and these two apps work very well together and you will definitely feel happy after you have purchased them and will not regret purchasing them. Thank you for watching until the end. Please like and subscribe.